Back in the 1850s, this hill was considered to be the perfect spot for a Boston merchant to build his summer house. This is called the Homer House. Now that merchant was the uncle of one of America's greatest artists, Winslow Homer. Look at this place. Hey Gary. Hi Richard. Gary Wolf is the architect helping with the restoration of the Homer House. Gary, I'm dying to hear some of the history here. Well, there's a wonderful history to the house. Uh, as you know, uh, Belmont is a beautiful spot and these hillsides are wonderful. Uh, the mid 19th century, people living in Boston, it's polluted, it's dirty, it's noisy. You've got a beautiful hillside out in the suburbs here. The train comes through in the 1840s this becomes the ideal spot for a summer home. Well, it certainly is ideal. I tell you, you know, I see these beautiful Victorians, but by the time I often get to them, they're often been remodeled and all the systems are gone and everything's been changed. Not so here, how'd that happen? It's extraordinary. Uh, in 1927, a developer intended to purchase the property and demolish it. This was a teardown. Wow. The Belmont Women's Club came together to purchase the building because of its historic significance and they saved the building. Adapted it for its clubhouse Great. because of its association with the artist Winslow Homer. Right, we're thankful for them saving this beautiful place. Now Winslow Homer, I've known about Winslow Homer, I'm a boater, so I know that famous image of breezing up, it suggests an afternoon on a great boat. Absolutely, and uh, those, are, those are the great works of his late career. Uh, his career began here in Belmont, and many of his early drawings, illustrations, and even some of the paintings were produced right here at this house. I tell you, it's beautiful. I love the house, but I'm also a systems guy, and I'm told that you have in this house some original plumbing, heating, and even cooling in this building, right? We do. Let me show you. All right. This is a summer house, Richard, and bay windows and porches are critical for that. It's a splendid place to sit, distant view, sunshine. It makes the house. Well, I also know, though, that a bay window like this with shutters is also the beginnings of the cooling and ventilation system. Remember, this was before air conditioning, before household electricity, no mechanical fans. So with this, you could have prevailing breezes from this side, say, and now you could have windows that let that air come across. But what do you do on the south side where solar gain would just kill you during the day? You could close these shutters, open them up down here, and now let the air be drawn in across that first floor to try and cool down here. That's right. But what's unique here is the engine for the whole system. And I'm going to imagine that we have to climb a few stairs for that. You're right. The views are spectacular up here, aren't they? Now, we're in a cupola, and people see a cupola like this and think it's just a great place to sit. But this is an important part of the engine you talked about for cooling, right? No question. We're up on the top of the house. It's, it's not decorative. Open all these windows, that cross ventilation you described, all the air coming through, it comes right up and out. That's this right. is an 1850s whole house fan. So that beautiful stair hall we just came up is really just an oversized duct. You're right. This was pretty high tech for its day back then. I hear you also have indoor plumbing here, and that was a new thing back then. That's absolutely right. This was state of the art. It's downstairs now. All right. Look at this, Gary. This would have been a very big deal back in 1850. No question. All the people they left back in the city, if they wanted to do their business, they went out to a privy out in the backyard. This was very big. Here's the toilet. You know, they were really worried about the fumes. Bringing the plumbing indoors was very worrisome. People were dying of tuberculosis and typhus. They didn't know why. They blamed the indoor plumbing. So this is a modern toilet back in 1850. You see a wooden seat on the top. And now if I pull that, you can see, here's the bowl. Here's a lead water pipe. It would have had a pole chain to a tank that would have been right above us. It would have come down here to flush it. But to make sure those fumes went away, they had a thing right here called a local vent. Now this didn't go into a plumbing vent like we do nowadays. It would have gone into the chimney, the same chimney that had the fireplaces. When the chimney was on, it would be pulling slightly, pulling air in to try and keep those fumes in. This would have been china, would have been hand molded, not like the modern toilet we have nowadays. And look at this bathtub, this bathtub. It's not gonna be enameled steel or enamel cast iron like we're used to. This would have been copper or tin it would have been fabricated probably on site right here. They'd build a frame and then solder it and put it into place. And talk about modern convenience, you would have had hot and cold running luxury, not buckets that you'd heat down on a wood stove and carry up here. And to get water pressure, no electricity, remember, it would have been somebody would have a hand pump 
to pump water from well up to a cistern on the top floor, and maybe another pump at the kitchen to push the hot water up to here. For the drainage, they would have had the two drains from here and from the sink go right out together, right out to a cesspool. Now a cesspool is nothing more than a manhole that would have sat somewhere outside in the back, not like a modern sewer system we have nowadays. But it was all state of the art That's at right. the time. And what about this tile? It's beautiful. There's a stained glass window as well. Uh, quite a bathroom for the 19th century. Certainly better than a privy. We're going to redo from the tile up in our long-term restoration. Well, I tell you, I'm not sure a lot of people would think this is a treasure trove, but to me, it's heaven. I hear there's also a kitchen that's still original. There is. Let me show it to All you. All right. Look at that great old stove. Is that original? It's terrific. Uh, it's not from 1853. You know how I know that? Why? Oh, because I'm a scholar of the subject. <laughs> oh, in a remodel 25 years later? <laughs> that is cool. And what do we got here? Oh, look goodness. at this. Here's our refrigerator. Oh, look at this. So before modern refrigeration we take for granted, there was a day that this was the biggest deal you could ever have. In every local town, there was a whole industry. There was an ice man that would come and deliver ice. It was also a big industry locally. You had these ponds where they harvested the ice all winter stored them in ice houses. And so this was a very big deal. Look at here, AJ Chase's Cold Blast Refrigerator, Boston, New York. These people were living large. They were. And if you like systems, we have one more to show you. All right. Look at this butler's pantry. Ah, sure. Complete with a copper sink. Boy, that's original, that's great. But wait till you see what's down below. Oh, look at this. This is really the vestiges of indoor plumbing just coming into a building. You know, they were worried about those fumes I was talking about, so they needed a water seal, a trap. And we know the modern trap nowadays shaped like a P. Well, this is what they built on site called a drum trap. It's, it's made out of lead. That's the material they had available to them. They took sheet lead, molded it, heated it up, uh, wiped the joints to make it tight. They had to really build it in place. And you don't see many of these left anymore. This is really cool. I got to thank you for the tour, and I'm really glad that the Belmont Women's Club saved this gem. It's terrific. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.